seconds. And many times, and I've experienced it in my life, five minutes after the service is over, I'm right back in my mess. I'm right back in my depression, right back in our stuff. Oh, we come to church, and I tell you, we had church today. Amen. But my problems are still the same problems. My situations haven't moved. My circumstances haven't changed. Well, I'm here to let you know today, not only do we have power to jump, not only do we have power to shout but we have power to be overcomers in Jesus Christ amen one of the problems and the one that we're going to talk about today is a little bit is our expectations of the Lord what do you expect when you woke up this morning and started preparing yourself to come in the house of the Lord what were we expecting well, we expect them to have service and a meal and go home like we do all the time. Amen. What were we were expecting? Amen. Were we were expecting to sing our song. What were, or were we expecting God to do something in our lives? Were we expecting God to move in my circumstance? Lord, I've got a circumstance I need you to move in. And I'm looking for it today. If it doesn't come today, I'm looking for it tomorrow. If it doesn't come tomorrow, I'm looking for it the next day. When you pray. What are you expecting God to do? Some of us don't even have faith in our own prayers. Oh God, it's all right to come to the altar when the altar call is made, but it's even better to know that there's an altar in you. Amen. There's a Holy Ghost in you. It's all right to call someone, amen, and to talk about what you're going through, but it's better to know that you can get in touch with God for yourself. There is the Holy Ghost in me. There's the Holy Ghost in you. There's a God in you that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all that we can ask or think. The right attitude is to have an attitude of expectancy. What expectancy says at any moment, at any time, God is able to step down in my circumstances. At any moment, God is able to step down in my situation. At any second, God is able to turn some things around. Oh, God, that's the right attitude, the attitude. That when I pray, I should expect God to hear my prayer. When I ask God, I should expect it. Hey, man, I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm just talking about believing what God has said. He has given us this power. Now it's time to use what God has given us. The Bible declares now faith is the substance of things hoped for. When our hope increases, our attitude toward God changes and the things of God will change. I'm looking for my blessing. I'm not afraid to give him the praise because today might be my day for God to turn some things around. So I don't have, you know, sometimes it seems like every Sunday you got to start from ground zero with the saints. And work them all the way up again. Amen. You got you to gotta start. It's almost like when we come in, we don't eat. We don't know what praise is. We don't know what worship is. You know, Come on, somebody. The praise leaders are going, come on, somebody. Lift up your hands. Come on, somebody. But sometime when we know God, we ought to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. In other words, when I know that God has been good to me, I don't need a cheerleader to tell me to give God the praise. I don't need to wait for the cutest stand or the cue to sit when I know God been good your problem not going to be getting me up your problem going to be sitting me down because when I think of the goodness of God and all that God has done for me oh I don't need no music I could shout right now there are going to be some times in your life where the drummer's not going to be there to give you the right beat there's going to be some times in your life that the organ player is not going to be there to give you the right cue or the right key but when you think of God you're going to be on your job anybody ever been on your job and God began to deal with you God began to mess with you and you tell the Lord Lord please don't do it right now this ain't the right place this ain't the right time and sometimes you got to go in the bathroom and you got get you a little quickie and wipe wipe your eyes and come out because he's been that good to you sometime when you think about the goodness of Jesus you may have to pull over to the side of the road and just lift up your hands expectation of what God has done for us the scripture that we read in your hearing today tells us the story of a woman full 
of expectation toward God. The Bible just calls her a certain woman. And I have found out in scripture when it says just a certain woman or a certain man, it's designed so that we can look at ourselves and see ourselves in the situation. In other words, when the scripture says a certain woman or a certain man, what it's really telling us is you need to put your name here if it applies to you and if it applies to your circumstance. Look at the situation. It says she had an issue. The Bible says she had an issue of blood. But I want to declare to you today, your issue might not be blood. But we got some issues. We got some issues on today. Oh, it ain't about how you look. You know, we know how to look the part. We know how to come in here and act the part for a few minutes. But how many ain't afraid to say, I've got some issues. I've got some stuff. I need God to work it. The Bible even goes, one writer even called it a plague. The description of a plague is something that torments. It oppresses. In other words, a plague is something that makes you lose sleep at night. A plague is something that stays on your mind and no matter how much you try to shake it, amen, every now and then it comes back and it gives you a problem. Amen. You, you know, I, I laugh at people that tell you, don't worry, don't do this, just trust God. All that sounds fine and well. But how many know none of us plan to worry? I don't plan to worry. I don't plan to get stressed out. Sometime I wake up and there the stress is. I don't even know where it came from. I just know I have it. See, I can tell when I get stressed out because I have simple tasks to perform and I don't do it. I'll come home and my wife said, such and such called you and you need to call me back. And I said, yeah, I'll get it later. <laughs> now I know I'm stressed out. She said, you better call them because they're going to think I didn't give you the message. Yeah, I'll get it in a second I'll, after I take my nap. <laughs> I'll get to it then. Sometimes people are fussing with me because I'm not answering my email. Stressed. Terry, when you going to get back with me? When you going to get me that report? Yeah, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm going to be there in a second. Didn't mean to get there. But how many know the pressures of life? If you have children, if you've got a job, you're dealing with your money. Tell somebody, pressure, baby, pressure. That's the real of it. That's where the Holy Ghost needs to be alive in our life. It tormented her. Torment gives the indication it's more than a physical thing. It had gone beyond a physical thing. You see, when you're tormented, you think people look at you funny. That's torment. When you're tormented, you're wondering who's talking about you. That's torment. It didn't got to your mind. See, when the enemy begins to mess with our minds, the first thing he wants to do is to separate us from the people of God because he knows that the people of God is where our strength relies. He knows that the people of God is where we can go and we can get some help. I believe that my sisters and brothers in God are just like my sisters and brothers in the natural. Sisters, my sisters and brothers in the natural, sometimes we fuss like cats and dogs. Sometimes we fought like we lost our minds, but you dare not let nobody else mess with us. Then we would bind together and you got a problem on your hand. I believe that even with all the little simple stuff that we deal with each other, we still are there for each other. I believe that the same person that talked about you on yesterday will be the same person that will come to your rescue when you need help. That's how it worked. I found out I can't afford to cut folk out my life because I don't know who I'm going to need going through here. I used to have this little smart thing that I used to say to my children. I had this little thing. I said, well, you know, you're going to need me before I need you. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, in reality, you don't know who you're going to need first. See, I might think when I was talking about that, I was thinking about money. I was thinking about dollars. You're going to have to come back because I got the money. Then I might fall and I might hurt myself and my child might be the one that has to come. So I shut my mouth up. I, oh, God, because this world is funny. Life, life. See, I'm getting old. I ain't old yet, but I'm getting there. That mean I ain't quite what I used to be. But every now and then I have a flash of what I used to. And I'm finding out that life is unpredictable. 
I'm finding out that life is funny. I'm finding out in life that one day you might be up and the simplest thing might happen and it'll turn your world upside down. That's what I'm finding out about life. Many of us think that the source of our plague, our affliction, our torment is other people. Some folk think it's my husband. If I just had married somebody else. I know y'all not saying anything like that. I believe that I married the wrong woman. If I had just a little bit more money, everything would be all right. But the real source sometimes is coming from the inside. Oh, God, that's like, you know, because we don't know what the root of the problem is. Sometimes we got to get to the root of the problem. Why we act like we act. Why we do what we do. God, you know, there are some people, high blood pressure is called the silent killer. That's because sometimes you don't recognize the symptoms until it's too late. Some of us, we have silent killers in our lives. In other words, we've gotten ourselves involved with people. We've gotten ourselves involved with situations and circumstances that's bringing us down, but we don't recognize that we're dealing with a killer. We don't recognize we're dealing with a problem. We think they're praying for us. We think that, that we're talking to the wrong folk. See, as saints, we try to internalize all our problems. We've been trained and taught to have a poker face. And I'm not going to say that you're supposed to tell your problems because I think most of us are good enough to know that you can't talk to everybody. I think most of us understand that concept. But see, sometimes we try to hold so much stuff in and we get so filled up. I don't know about you, there have been times I was so filled up, somebody that I know I shouldn't have said anything to, they just caught me at the wrong time and I spilled my guts and I said, oh God, yeah. what have I done? I should have never told them that because now everybody going to know. I wasn't talking to the refrigerator because they can't keep anything. But sometimes you get so filled up. Who do you talk to? Who does the preacher talk to? 